Well, hello once again, and this time I'm going to go through the menus on my D750, and that might be something you're interested in and might not be, so uh, let's take a quick look. I'm going to start with the playback menu. Um, what I usually do is, let's see if I can find the top, okay. Um, playback options, I don't really care about seeing the focus point because if you press the OK button after you're, when you're reviewing a picture and you have it set that way, it's going to zoom straight in on the um, focus point anyway. Um, highlights, you know, I want to see the blinking highlights, histogram, general shooting data, and the overview. Uh, I don't have, I've got image review turned off and rotate tall, what that's going to do is if you take a picture in portrait orientation, um, the camera, depending on another setting, will record that it was taken in portrait orientation so it'll be properly displayed in Adobe, Adobe Lightroom, for example, if that's what you're using, um, or other photo editing and viewing programs. Uh, but if Rotate Tall turned off here in the playback menu, uh, that'll keep it so that the picture is you know, displayed full, uh, full view like this in portrait orientation. It's not going to automatically flip it when you're viewing it in um, the horizontal or landscape mode. So if I took a portrait orientation vertical photo and viewed it back like this, with this rotate tall was turned on, then it would turn it. And so you just have a little strip of the picture right here and it makes it smaller. And if I want to see the picture full view, so I just have it fill the screen and I can turn the camera sideways if I want to see it, um, you know, properly. So I don't need it to be turned automatically for me. So that's why I have rotate tall turned off. Um, okay, into the uh, photo shooting menu. Let's go back to the top. Um, just leave the default for the file naming storage folder. I only turn on the uh, second second slot as a backup if I'm actually doing something important. Otherwise, um, I don't really care. You know, I'll just leave it on overflow. So if I'm on vacation or somewhere where I definitely don't have um, another opportunity to get that picture, I'll then I'll do the uh, second slot as backup. Image quality raw, I'm always, always just shooting in raw only. Not raw plus JPEG. Uh, image area, that's always going to be FF, FX for me. I don't uh, auto DX crop on, so if I put a crop lens on, which I probably never would. Uh, JPEG compression, I always leave that optimal quality. Um, you know, why wouldn't you? I don't shoot JPEG much, uh, hardly ever, but if I did, um, I'd want the best JPEG I could get. And for the uh, NEF, you know, the RAW format, I use lossless compressed, um, you know, the way you get um, the file smaller on the disk, and uh, but still, you know, good quality and all the data there. Um, compressed, I've never really tried that before, but you know, it, maybe you wouldn't be able to work as much with uh, trying to lift the shadows and so on if possible. You know, if you had it set to uh, compressed, um, not something I'm that familiar with. I don't really use it. Uh, and in 12-bit instead of 14-bit, 14-bit will increase the file size. And from what I've seen in different tests, you know, from other people online, um, you really, it, it, you'd be hard-pressed to tell the difference between a 12-bit and 14-bit file, uh, even, you know, lifting shadows and so on. So I just save the space and um, the write speed and use 12-bit. So, uh... Picture control doesn't really matter if you're shooting raw because you can set that in the on your uh, photo editor on the computer. And uh, color space RGB, active detailing. Usually leave that set to low. I don't, don't necessarily need it on, but uh, if you I believe this is going to matter if you're shooting JPEG vignette control. Um, I just have it set to auto or normal. Um, so if you've got a lens like the 12, 24 to 120, it, it does have some vignetting on the you know, the extreme edges of the picture. Um, I don't see that in Lightroom because I'm always shooting raw, but if you're shooting JPEGs, I think this is going to matter. So you can set your vignette control here. Uh, down to auto distortion control, same thing, you know, the pin cushion or pin cushion or um, what's the uh, barrel distortion, whatever the the lens distortion, you know, it may be like pulled in or pushed out. Um, Again, that's something I don't see on Lightroom shooting raw because uh, the Lightroom lens profiles take care of all that for me. But again, if you're shooting JPEG, I think this is going to matter for you. Uh, long exposure noise reduction, I just leave that off. Don't really care about it. High ISO noise reduction, it's got great ISO capabilities anyway, so I just always leave that set to low. ISO sensitivity, 
Uh, I always start at 100, which is the base ISO, the normal base ISO. You could actually go down to 50 if you wanted to, low one. Um, and for myself, uh, I usually just set max it out at 1600 and minimum shutter speed set to auto. So what that does, it depends on the focus uh, or the uh, focal length of the lens. So if you're 24 millimeter, you know, it's going to be around 1 30th of a second is the minimum shutter speed for it starts to increase the ISO. Um, and then, you know, if you're zoomed out to like 120, uh, then the shutter speed is going to be uh, automatically increased. The minimum shutter speed for before the ISO goes up, it'll be increased to, you know, somewhere around 1 one twenty-fifth, or what I don't know the exact uh, numbers, but if you play with it yourself, you'll see that um, you can also change the auto setting to be biased, you know, to slower shutter speeds uh, or faster. So if if you're using like a thirty-five millimeter prime lens, for example, and you find that the you know one fortieth of a second or whatever is still too slow for your for shaky hands, you can actually go in here and set set this up to faster. Um, there's two settings of faster and two settings of slower. So that's why you would use that if you wanted to uh, adjust the auto, the automatic setting for the minimum shutter speed in auto ISO. In auto ISO, obviously you can set that way high. Um, but my point of setting at 1600 is, you know, why not keep it as low as you can, um, especially during the daytime. If it gets, you know, really low light, I might go ahead and set it to, uh, you know, up to 6400 or so. but. For my purposes, I'll usually be able to keep a fast enough shutter speed uh, if I'm shooting 16th of a second, especially since I'm not shooting really fast moving subjects anyway. Um, you know, in museum, for example, you know, 1600 for a non moving subject, uh, there's really no reason why you'd ever need to go higher than that uh, because you could probably get away with in a museum, even a dark museum, you know, around 1 15th of a second or so anyway, shutter speed, and that should be enough to get your, you know, exposure that you need. Um, MLL3, the remote control, the wireless remote. Uh, if you want to use that, it's a little bit odd. I think this should be on an external button somewhere uh, for quick access to it. But if you want to turn on the uh, ability to use, and this is every time you turn the camera off and on, it's going to reset it. Um, if you want to use that wireless mode, come in here and, and you can turn on to two second delayed, uh, quick response mode, which is just you press the um, button on the MLL3 or uh, your generic Amazon MLL3, uh, if you have one of those, which I do, uh, it'll take the picture right away after it focuses and uh, remote mirror up. That'll lock the mirror up first press and second press of the remote. It'll take the picture. Um, exposure, don't use that. Interval timing, don't really get into that too much. Okay, moving moving settings. It's similar to the um, photo shooting menu, but uh, customized for the movie shoot, shooting menu. Um, you know, just pick whatever frame rate you want and so on. Um, and the quality, you know, these, these are pretty self-evident and obvious. You just choose however you want to set those. And again, you can have the ISO settings for the uh, manual and so on and what the maximum sensitivity is you want for, you know, uh, auto ISO and manual mode, which is nice because it'll automatically increase or decrease the exposure based on the ISO that it's using and so you can leave the shutter speed and aperture fixed uh, at a certain uh, setting. Alright, so then um, these are the big ones. Autofocus menu under the custom settings menu. Um, I always use for autofocus continuous, I use the focus priority because I know some people shooting sports, you know, especially if you're being paid, maybe they want to leave it in release mode. Uh, so maybe if you get a picture that's not totally in focus, that's fine. They just want to get the picture anyway. But myself, I'm not shooting fast action usually, so I just want to have the AFC, you know, continuous. And when it actually gets a focus, uh, then go ahead and release the shutter and take a picture. Um, you know, as I'm holding it down, of course. Uh, AFS single, you know, again, focus, not not the, uh, as soon as you press it all the way down, it takes a picture regardless if it's focused or not. That's what that means. Uh, if you have it on focus, then it's obviously going to only take the picture once it achieves focus. Um, this is, uh, there's an explanation about this I've seen online. Uh, focus tracking with lock on, it determines once you've locked onto a subject, how long is it going to stay locked at that point or at that 
focal that that uh, focus distance before it tries to change it you know so maybe you're tracking a bird and it moves through some trees or whatever you know if you have it set to short then it's going to try to refocus on something it found that's closer to the camera um, you know quicker than it would if you had it set to long so uh, that's what that's for focus point display I don't, you know I don't know I don't know if I've ever really changed that I'm just going to go on to the things that I definitely change when I get the camera. Some of these other things I might have, but um, some of them are so uh, um, used infrequently. I, I just don't really remember exactly what they are. Um, Built-in autofocus assist illuminator. I usually leave that off. Um, the D750 focuses really well in low light, so I don't really normally have a need to leave that on so I don't see if you can see the cat's tail is flipping his tail around in the top. Move your tail. Anyway. Um, this is a default for the ISO step value. You can have it, uh, I guess, uh, you know, as you're changing the ISO, you can have it go up in half steps instead of third steps. Uh, let's go down to easy exposure compensation. I tried this but then I turned it back off because it didn't seem I, maybe I don't understand the feature and how it interacts with other features of the camera but uh, basically you can put the um, turn to, if like in let's say you're in aperture priority which I usually am so I have my back button set for the changing the aperture but then you can with easy exposure compensation turned on uh, instead of having to press the exposure compensation button and then turning the dial you can just simply turn the front dial um, but it didn't always stick for me, so I, I just turned it on because it's less con turned it off since it's less confusing for me. Um, so now, if I want to change the exposure compensation, I just you know I know where the button is. I just reach up, press it down, right up here, and um, turn the rear dial to ch change the uh, exposure comp. Uh, matrix metering. Uh, that's if you want to have. Um, when you've got matrix, when you're using matrix meeting, do you want it to uh, expose for the face, you know, and detect the faces? And I have that turned on. Um, da -da -da, fine tune optical exposure. You can bias this to, um, you know, turn your, um, change how the camera um, does its metering. You know, you can, in matrix metering, you can say, you know, I want you to be, you know, three, six below where the camera thinks it normally should be if you think it's overexposing too much all the time. Uh, but if you saw that warning, um, the warning says basically that setting that you change here is not going to be reflected on any of the displays. So if you're changing changing that in this menu, find the uh, B6 fine-tune optimal, optimal exposure, then you're not going to see it in the the actual display up here as a, you know, like a negative one or negative two whatever like like you've got some exposure compensation going on uh, you just won't know that you just have to remember that you did it in here so uh, be aware of that uh, shutter release uh, I don't need to use standby timer that's uh, how long the camera you know the uh, make the metering keeps active and so on before it'll uh, the displays will kind of go dark the cats are going crazy over here um, the uh, self timer, I usually, well, depends on what I'm doing. I have it set to two seconds now. You can set that to quite a bit longer if you need to. And uh, actually, you can change the self timer. So when you use the self timer, you can actually have it take more than one shot, you know, up to nine shots. So uh, that could be good if you're doing a group shot and you want to take, you know, okay, people, everybody stand around. We're going to take uh, three pictures. And uh, so you go to self timer, turn this on to three. And then, uh, you know, you can just have it shoot three shots, you know, one after the other. So in case somebody's got their eyes closed or whatever. Um, and then the interval between those shots. So I think that's a really nice feature. Um, <clears throat> monitor off. It just kind of tells you, you know, depending on which mode you're in, when do you want the monitor to be turned off? So like in playback, it'll turn off after 10 seconds. When you're in the menus, it'll turn off after one minute, whatever. Um, Let's see. Some of these are really obvious. I'm not going to bother with them. Uh, flash warning. 
viewfinder grid display, I always leave that on. I like the rule of thirds, so I usually like to leave that on. Uh, easy ISO, that kind of goes back to what I was saying about the easy exposure compensation. Um, again, if you're using like um, aperture priority, shutter priority, you can actually have like the front button, I think is what it turns into for the easy ISO. So you don't have to press one button and then turn another one to set the ISO. You can actually just spin the dial in the front and uh, have it change immediately. But uh, again, that's something I don't use. Um, flash sync speed. This is something I, I always, I, I'm not a big uh, flash person myself, but um, I always set my Nikon cameras to the highest flash sync speed with uh, auto, auto FP. So if the flash, you know, if it can't really sync with the shutter faster than 1 250th, then um, It'll, I think, believe what it does is it bursts, it sends several bursts of flash um, above the 1 250th so that, you know, that you get the proper exposure of the flash through the, through the whole frame rather than having like a, you know, a dark spot, dark uh, area across the bottom where your, uh, you know, the flash sync speed was, shutter speed was too high, you know, higher than the flash could sync with the shutter going up and down, or the going down. So, um, that's what that would be for. So if you're not aware of that, um, I would always go in and just change it to uh, auto FP 1 250th in this case for the D750. Um, that way I can just go out in uh, aperture priority and, uh, you know, set uh, a lower, you know, wider aperture during the daytime, you know, daylight hours. And if my shutter speed happens to be above 1 250th, that's okay because it'll still work right. Um, Flash shutter speed is going to be the minimum shutter speed that you want the flash to automatic, automatically be, or the that you want the camera to be set to the minimum shutter speed uh, while you have the flash turned on. So you know if you've got, uh, you know if you get you're outside and you've got your actually let's say if you're inside and you got um, you know it's kind of lower light and let's say you, the camera would have metered for like one twentieth of a second. As soon as you turn on the flash and you've got it set to 1 60th of a second you'll notice that the camera shutter speed is going to hop up to 1 60th so that's what that's going to do you can lower that if you want if you need to get um, naturally more ambient light in the background but of course you could use manual mode to do that too uh, flash control for built-in flash okay so this is where you can change it so the built-in flash is going to be um, acting as you know just a regular TTL flash um, you can set it for manual um, or very convenient actually is commander mode and you can set it so that the built-in flash you can actually when you're in commander mode set it so it's you know basically blank it out so it's not going to add anything to the exposure at all so uh, the only thing that you're using is for example in group A um, the flash that I would have in group A like my little SB500 uh, that would be set up for TTL and you can set your exposure compensation for the flash on group A uh, right here and you know the channel that it's on in my case that little SP 500 was on channel 3 um, so this is really convenient uh, for the built-in flash to um, be able to use the commander mode that's one of the things I really love about the Nikon cameras is using the built-in flash as a commander for a off-camera flash uh, I gotta apparently hold on a second I gotta go in okay let me go back and set that to ah back up to TTL. All right, thank you. Exposure compensation for the flash, you can uh, set that to be, you know, for the background only. If you're adjusting exposure compensation, I believe that's the way it works. If you're adjusting exposure compensation on the camera, you're only, in, with this setting, you're only adjusting the background, you know, the ambient light. Uh, otherwise, you're adjusting the flash uh, exposure compensation and the um, exposure compensation overall for the you know the ambient light uh, let's go down okay button I have mine set to um, in the shooting mode I have mine set so that it resets the focus point to the center uh, playback mode I have it set so it zooms in on the image on the focus point to 100% so you could use that to check your focus and uh, I don't use it for the uh, choose slot folder don't know what that is anyway uh, live view. Okay, so again with live view, I have it set for um, to reset the focus point to the middle 
Um, but you could also use it to zoom in and out, but I, you can use the buttons over here, the um, minus and plus, to uh, zoom in and out while you're in live view. Uh, let's go down. Function button. So the function button is the one on the bottom of the camera in the front, on the right, to the right of the lens. So I have that set up for uh, the virtual horizon, which should be in the optical viewfinder. Uh, if you want to virtual use the virtual horizon on the um, in live view, basically you just cycle through the info button back here, and uh, that'll you know cycle through until you get the virtual horizon. But um, that's what I use the function button for because uh, it you know it's really handy to make sure you got your image. Uh, vertical you know properly correctly you know, you know completely vertical or completely horizontal if it matters for you know, like your landscape scenes um, of course it tells you right there that that's the function button you can actually set the function button you know uh, option for when you press and hold you know so you press the function button and then you turn one of the command dials while you're pressing the button I, I always turn that on because that uh, really screwed me over one day and it was my fault when uh, you know, I had it from the factory. It was, and this was on a D700. Um, press and press and turn the command dial was set for bracketing. Uh, so all throughout the day, you know, I had uh, pictures that were overexposed, underexposed. I was like, what the hell is going on? So uh, I always turn it off because I never remember what I have it set for. It's not something I need. Um, preview button, which is the button on the top of the camera, you know, again, just above the function button down here. I have that set for spot metering. Um, change it to a lot of different things, but I have it set for spot metering so I can basically, you know, press and hold that button, uh, the uh, preview button, press and hold, and while you're pressing it, you're, you're in spot metering, so you can, um, you know, meter off of whatever subject you need, and then uh, take your picture, let go of it, and now you're back in matrix metering if that's what you were in previously. And again, you can set that button to be a, a press plus turn one of the command dials uh, to change other things like um, active de dieting, exposure delay, you know, all those other options here. Always leave that off. Uh, the exposure lock, AEL, AFL, um, I always just leave that for exposure. What I, the reason I do that is because I might need to since this doesn't have an AF on button, dedicated AF on, uh, I don't like my shutter button to be disabled for shutter release. I always like to have it enabled for shutter release, but if you assign this button back here as an AF on, then it disables your shutter button completely other than actually releasing the shutter. Um, so I like to have it um, to be focused up here also. So to get around that, like my DF has a, a dedicated AF on button, so I can press it focus on what I want, recompose, and then take picture, you know, with the shutter button in front. That's how I do it. Uh, but in this case, um, I leave this one set for the exposure only, so I can just kind of point the camera in the general direction. You know, let's say I'm in spot metering, I can point the camera at something, press and hold the button back here for the um, exposure lock, recompose, and then focus, and then take the picture with the front button, you know, the shutter release. That's the way I do it. I know some people like to totally separate focus from up here on the shutter button. They like to have it back here, uh, and I would too. I'd like to have I'd like to have it both ways. I like to be able to set this so it works as the uh, same way the DF does, or some of the uh, I believe probably the D810 and the D4 works that way, where you where you can um, when you press the AF button, AF on back here, uh, it'll focus, and then you can still use the front button to uh, you know. Well, obviously take the picture, but if you let go of the AF on, the front button still works for focus and uh, releasing the shutter. Customize command dials. Um, I don't really, I don't reverse mine. Uh, exposure setting on a one of these. I know I reversed. It may be in a different. You can reverse the uh, the way the buttons the front and rear dial, you know, like maybe this is plus going this way, you know, this way. Um, and that's minus normally, but you can reverse that. Um, basically, I've changed, I don't know if this is menu, but I've changed this rear button to be when I'm in aperture priority, 
I'm changing the aperture back here because it's easier for me when I'm holding the camera to just turn that with my thumb and uh, keep my grip, you know, my hand on the front grip and use the front button for the uh, shutter release. Um, let's see. Just wondering if that was in, maybe that's a uh, function button. No. Just checking to see. Customize command dials. It must have been in here. Choose main sub. Well, it's one of these. I'd have to research it. Um, apologize, but um, if you look in the manual, you'll be able to see what that is. Uh, basically, nor you know, in a normal situation, the front command dial would be the aperture change if you're in aperture priority, or the shutter speed change if you're in shutter priority, uh, the front dial, but I don't like that. I'd rather, it's easier for me, more comfortable to use the rear dial so I have it changed so that if I'm in aperture priority, which I am used most of the time, I change it with the uh, rear dial. All right, let's keep going. Um, release button. Oh, uh, this is another really useful feature. Assign movie button, assign movie record button. And the important thing to remember here is if you're in still photo mode, which means you're not, you know, you're not switched over here, you're not switched over to movie mode and press the button to go into live view. If, if you're, um, even if you got that there, but you're not in live view mode yet, this setting here applies. So basically the movie record button, this little red button here, um, you can change that so that it's set for the uh, ISO change. So Otherwise, that button is really useless if you're in still photo mode. If you're in movie mode and you're in live view, obviously that's going to start and stop the uh, movie recording, video recording. Uh, but if you're in still photo mode, so let's go into, just turn it back off and on, get out of the menu. So if I press the ISO button now, or not the ISO button, well it is now. If I press the movie record button up here, you'll see that it, it goes into the ISO settings. And if you turn the rear dial, it changes the, app, the um, ISO number. And if you spin the front dial, you can turn auto ISO on and off. So for me, that's very handy because, uh, you know, if I want to stick the camera on a tripod and, you know, do a, um, long, a slower shutter speed, um, like a long exposure, I want to turn the auto ISO off. So I just go in here and press the... Uh, video record button and that immediately takes you into the ISO settings. I mean, yes, you can press this button over here on the side, the default button for that the ISO button and change it that way, but that's two presses um, and it's not all on your right hand. So you can kind of do this mostly um, just with one hand if you, you know, you get your hand on the grip and um, press the video record button and then spin the dial to change your ISO settings. Okay, so that's the uh, assign movie record button. And again, that only applies to still, still photo mode. So otherwise it's useless in still photo mode. So it's an extremely handy feature to have. Mm -hmm. There's the movie settings. I don't think I've changed any of these. Uh, and this is specific to the, you know, if you're in the movie mode. Um, the setup menu. A lot of this stuff is uh, self-explanatory. Auto image rotation. This is where I was talking about in the playback menu. So I you want you want to always leave auto image rotation on. Uh, that way your image editing software will always know, you know, that the orientation that the camera was in when you took the picture, and it'll show it to you the right way, either horizontal or vertical. Um, and uh, so you'd always want to leave that turned on. But again, like I said, in the playback menu, I always leave that, uh, actually I gotta go to the top, the uh, rotate tall, and leave that turned off. I'm sorry if I had the camera out of the picture there a little bit. So back to the uh, setup menu, battery info, of course, you know, that will show you how much charge left on the battery how many pictures you've taken since it was charged last time and uh, the age of the battery, you know, I guess four is bad if you've kind of wore it out. 
Uh, of course, this one's not any better I've had. I've always been on zero, uh, even after a couple years of use.